Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. And Jamie. And Jamie. Jamie joins me. I'm here today. Um, so you're having fun on YouTube, aren't you? I am. <laughs> a lot of good <laughs> <Yes>. comments. <laughs> I am. <laughs> and I don't have to like force, force you to get you on anymore. No, you no. don't. I just say, hey, it's YouTube time. And I say, okay, let's go, because I don't think I have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> What's today's question? So today we're talking about quinoa. Um, a lot of people pronounce it lots of different ways. Quinoa, quinoa. Qu quinoa. So it's funny, you know, when you hear people, but quinoa. Yep, I had, a, I had a quinoa burger. You had a quinoa <laughs> burger, yes. Quinoa. And um, there's there's some problems getting it right now. Um, we're having problems. We're having problems We're having it. problems getting it. So can you explain what's going on with quinoa and why sure. it's so difficult to get? Sure. So first of all, we're one of the only places that's having a problem getting quinoa. Why is that? Uh, most of restaurants that buy quinoa and health food stores have no problem with supply. Of course, the price has gotten driven up over the years, but other places have no problem getting supply. We have a problem getting supply because we buy from one specific farm. And you've been to this farm. We've, yes, been, to this we've farm been to this farm many times. Many times. It's called White Mountain Farms. It's in Colorado. Now, quinoa is originally from South America. Okay. Very high in the Andes Mountains, it grows. Uh, White Mountain Farms, I think in 1979, 1980, they brought quinoa to America. They're the pioneers of quinoa in America. They are the probably largest commercial farm. Um, and it's grown in Canada as well, uh, a little bit. Uh, but here's the issue with quinoa. Because quinoa has been blown up, I mean literally blown up, the market has exploded on quinoa. What's happening in South America is we've actually been taking away their staple food source, their staple food supply. It's called the mother grain because they've used it for centuries upon centuries as their main source of, of food, of protein, of, of, of vitamins, minerals, of carbohydrates, of, of their sort of main food source. So what's happened is us Americans and other parts of the global market have come in and blown it up, have jacked the price up because of demand. Okay. And now these people in Ecuador, Peru, where it's growing, the locals, the farmers, don't even want to eat it themselves anymore because they know that they can make more money selling it. Ah. So the farmhands, the local workers, the people from, from those areas, it's, with, it's beyond their reach now economically. So we've created this, created this social imbalance, which is why we refuse to take part in that part of the quinoa market. We refuse to buy quinoa and keep contributing to that. So there's a lot of there's a lot of items that are produced all around the globe that appear to be healthy, that appear to be on the right track, but you never know what's happening in those individual villages, in those communities, in the, that region, in those valleys, of what's really happening with imbalance. And quinoa is one of those. It's created an imbalance. Um, so we've taken it away because we're paying more money for it. Now, for us, we buy from an American farm. The reason why we can't get any right now is because we're waiting for their harvest to be complete. Right. So as opposed to us just going and buying quinoa from anywhere, which we can easily do, we have, a, we have 10 different sources we could get quinoa here this week from, we opt not to do that. We opt to buy from one specific farm right. um, where it's an American-grown product. Um, we we know, know where it's coming we've from. We've been on the farm. We know where it's coming from. We have a relationship. And having that relationship is extremely important for right. us. And being able to say that we're providing socially really responsible food, um, is even more of a part of what we do here at Aroma Time. So it's really important that we don't dip our fingers into a supply that sort of, you know, is is not, how do I want to say this, that, that's not being divvied up fair. Right. Where it's affecting the locals down in that part of the world, that part of South America. So we just choose not to participate in it. So quinoa needs a very specific way that you process it. Um, you need to relay, remove a thin layer off of the seed called saponin, the saponin layer. Okay. So any farm just can't grow quinoa and call it a day and say, let's harvest it and eat it. If you did that, you'd have it would be very bitter and very astringent and you wouldn't want to eat quinoa. So it needs that thin layer of saponins removed on the outside, which has a, it's a special processing tool, sort of like how you hull barley. Um, just need to get that, that thin layer off on the outside. So thus, if we had the right conditions, or other farms of the right conditions, we couldn't just grow and eat it. You wouldn't enjoy it. Okay. So you have to get it from a farm that has the proper processing equipment, or if it's- So it's not something that we could just grow- No. Now, quinoa in our needs- backyard. No. Especially not ours. Quinoa, or a farmer. 
Right. I mean, you know, like an everyday farmer. No, you couldn't. Just because you have some quinoa seeds. Like doesn't... broccoli. You can just go out there, grow broccoli, and pick it, and it's ready to go. Exactly. You, we can't, you can't do that. You can't quinoa. do that. So, um, but now, to make it more complicated, quinoa has to be at above 70,000 feet in elevation. Uh, so there's certain requirements for growing as well. It has a very short season. They okay. plant it in May. You can eat the greens of the quinoa like spinach in June. Okay. And by the end of August, it's already being picked. Okay. It's in full maturity and being picked. Um, you know, they, they dry the seeds and then they they, um, they process it, uh, the sap and then layer on it. So the farm that we buy from hasn't processed it yet. So they're, 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 they've run out of the year, year before crop. So now we have a short little gap of quinoa. We have maybe, I think, less than one pound of quinoa. We buy 25 pounds at a time, wow. bags. Right. So we have maybe less than one pound of quinoa in house right now. And we're, we're trying to conserve it and stretch it until the next crop, okay. which we might make it, but we might run out. That's why we might not have quinoa on the menu if you're used to us having quinoa. Um, so that's it. That's, that's our philosophy on quinoa on social responsibility. So it's just not about buying food for us. Right. It's not about just getting out there and saying, let's just buy. Whatever we can, the commodity item. Right. And Even the healthy, so-called healthy commodity right. item or whatever. It's not about buying an item just to, have it, just, to be, just to have it on our menu. And I don't think a lot of people really understand a lot of our philosophy right. about food. Because it's hard to come into the restaurant and have one meal and really understand the great lengths that we go through to, to source everything from our sweeteners, our local maple syrup, our local honey, to our stuff that comes from Bali, the coconut right. sugar that we personally know, the people who produce it, the people who we personally know that make our hand soap for the bathrooms. So it's hard to come in in one shot to the restaurant and say, wow, this is everything they do. So that's why I've created our YouTube channel. Yes, so people can understand a little bit more about what we do at the restaurant. Right, and get in more in depth and where we can go on and just tell our story. Yes. So that's the story with quinoa. So now, when people ask, I know you know the story, but right. now if you're watching and you want to know why our quinoa might be low on supply, that's the reason why our quinoa may run out. But the good news is it will be back. It will be American. Um, the interesting thing about us is we've never had that, that, that price hike in quinoa because we've been paying the high price to begin with. Right. It's always been double the price for us. And over the last, you know, five, seven, ten years, Everybody else's quinoa started now edging up in price, edging up in price. It's still not caught up to ours, but we're still paying a premium price for quinoa. And we're happy to pay the premium, premium price for um, the relationship and to know that you know we're buying it from a source that's not taking it out of the native hands, the local yes. hands. So great. Anything else? No, nope, that's it. Excellent. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out our channel. Please hit like. Subscribe. Pass it on. Leave comments. And uh, thanks for being on with me. You're welcome.